unfortunately. I feel like you learned this morning, so it's <laughs> too painful for you. Great. Aaron, how you doing, man? It's good to see you. Pleasure. Yeah, it's great. See you. Thanks so much uh, again for meeting with me. I know your time is super valuable and that you've had a bit of a crazy day thus far, so I uh, really appreciate the time. And um, just like to ask you, how's your, uh, how's your hand feeling, man? I know it was a tough injury. It's, it's doing all right. Not too bad. Yeah. Not too bad. When Thank do you, get you for the, When do you get the sling off? Hopefully, I, I've, I said hopefully by Friday, hopefully by this Friday. <laughs> okay, okay. And if not, then the next Friday. So no uh, no arm wrestling for you? No arm wrestling. Okay. <laughs> no no any crazy stuff. Great. Well, cool. Um, so listen, let's uh, let's dive in. You ready to uh, talk some numbers and let's talk about our, 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 uh, our meeting? Um, what I'd love to do, just kind of frame out, like, what... Uh, the next you know, 20, 25 minutes or so are going to look like. Um, we're going to revisit our progress up to this point, and there's quite a bit to revisit and celebrate, which is great. Uh, and then we're actually going to talk about our next step, which is going to be redirection. We've kind of hinted to that over the last couple of weeks, but that's the next biggest lever in the room, and I'm going to show you some data that actually supports that. We're going to talk through three um, separate redirection techniques, um, and I'm actually going to model each of those for you. Great, that'll be uh, good. Great, and then uh, I'm gonna actually ask you to, mo uh, to model those as well while I'm giving feedback um, okay, in, the, I'll, in the moment. <laughs> I'll give it a shot. Hey, um, I say it like this, when I do a model for folks, I say that this is my B plus, um, so there's no expectation. I'm not expecting that I'll do it perfectly, and so um, please, please don't feel any pressure to do anything perfectly today. We're we'll probably Promise you it will not be perfect. <laughs> Great, um, and then what we'll do is we'll talk about like, next steps because what I what I don't want to do is just practice a bunch of stuff in isolation and then not leave you um, with like next steps for how it's going to look when we're in the class so we'll talk about cool. different signals I'll give you when I get into the room etc. Uh, Does that that'd make sense? Great. Yeah that'd be great. Great cool. Um, big picture we are looking and we've mentioned this before but I just want to revisit by the end of our time together which is about six weeks from now that 85% of students do you have your rubric by the way so you yes, can look on with me great so 85% of students on task throughout the lesson we're getting at that piece by piece and last week what we were focused on was 85% of students on task throughout direct instruction yes yes your two skills that you worked on last week or that we've been working on the last couple of weeks were um, Directions that include movement, uh, directions that include movement, noise, materials, and time, which you've, um, I mean, you're really excelling at at this point. Um, and also giving directions, uh, number 14, with the attention of the overwhelming majority of students. So if you see what's, what, what, what we're building is like, hey, as opposed to what it used to look like, where you'd maybe be talking and some kids are listening, some kids aren't. Now what you're doing is you're getting students' attention. Everybody's focused on you, and then you're giving super clear directions. And what that's allowing for, whereas our initial number was about 55% of students on task mm -hmm. during DI, we're up to about 78%. And, that's and I can definitely see it. Like, it feels better. Yeah. Um, what feels better about it? Just when I come in and I'm looking around, it feels like... I'm not just teaching to a small portion of the class. It feels like I'm teaching to the class, and it feels a lot better. Don't get me wrong. There's room for improvement. There's sure. places where I still feel like I'm struggling, but in general, I feel more confident in the front of the room. Great. That's great to hear. And I think that the big thing is, is like, and this isn't this isn't um, quantitative, but you look more confident. Thank you. Um, and so that uh, combined with like the hey, actually the numbers say that close to 80% of kids. Um, are doing what you're asking during direct instruction means that there's been a big jump. That's awesome. I feel good about it. Good. Um, let's let's talk about the next step there because where it's um, the on task. Actually, the truth is when direct instruction starts, you're closer to 90, 95 percent. Where it's Sal, please report to the main office immediately. Access, please report to the main office immediately. Um, where that number starts to uh, dwindle is while you're instructing, during the direct instruction itself, when students who are off task, um, either they're disturbing other students, they're not doing the work themselves, um, and you're not at this point addressing that. Yeah, I still struggle with redirection a lot. Great, and that's, I mean, that's why we're doing this, and I know I told you to like, hey, let's hold on redirection for right now. I know you were eager to get to it even last week, but we said let's hold, let's get our directions rock solid, getting student attention rock solid, and now this week we're gonna just gonna focus heavily on redirection. Awesome. Great. Um, so we're gonna focus on three separate redirection strategies. These are by no means Should I be the only three. Right now? Well, so I wanna show you, I created this document um, for you, and so it has the three techniques oh, awesome. here. Um, and so you have an opportunity just to jot some notes over here, and then these are kind of the models that I'm gonna that I'm gonna get into uh, in a moment. Perfect. And so, 
Um, three uh, redirection techniques of varying invasiveness. Um, these are not the only redirection techniques that there are. Um, certainly there are things like quick public correction, things that sound like Jameer, face the front, stop speaking, right? That's not the stuff we're gonna focus on today. That's the stuff that I've seen that you're actually, you're pretty good at at this point. I'm gonna focus on stuff that- the Things that I need help with. And it's stuff that's a little more nuanced than just saying student X, do the thing I'm asking. You're fine at that. We're gonna focus on some other stuff that's maybe a little bit more nuanced and in some sense, a little bit more subtle. Gotcha. Does that sound cool? That's so great. let's start with the first one. It's called self-interrupt. I'm gonna give kind of a brief overview on this and then it, to me it makes sense just to like model it. I'll model it a couple times. I'll do what I call my B plus model. It won't be perfect, uh, but I'll try and do my best to get it as close to perfect as possible. But the idea with self-interrupt is you are instructing in front of the room you notice that um, one to two students are not with you uh, and you just stop mid-sentence and I've even found it makes sense to stop mid-word um, and, uh, and, and do not speak until those folks look up and realize that you are waiting on them. So stopping mid-word, stopping mid-sentence, focusing your attention on those students who aren't, aren't complying, um, and that using that technique to get them back on task. Okay. Um, so I just want to be clear because for each of these, and it's not necessarily an exact science, but I am going to, because we are going to do a rapid fire practice later, okay. um, I want you to think self-interrupt when it's one to two students. Okay. One to two students. And so we'll talk about anonymous reminder and group reminder in a moment, but like thinking self-interrupt when it's just like, there are two kids that are just like, they're not with you and they're just having a quick conversation. Gotcha. Sound cool? Yeah, and I appreciate you clarifying, like being specific about what I need to look for. Yeah, and again, I said, it's not an exact science. I don't want you spending any time being like, is it five, is it six? Which like, you'll get it, right? When we get to group reminder down here, if. 24 of your 29 kids aren't doing what you're asking, that's like, that's the group. <laughs> like, but even if it's just like seven out of like 25, like, that still could be group, but I don't want you to get caught up in like if, if, what the exact numbers are, but, but, but yeah, these are like general guidelines. But basically self-interrupt is generally for a smaller group and group reminder when it would be a much larger portion of the class. Great, exactly. Let's do some practice. I'm gonna model this a couple times for you. I'm gonna ask you to just, as I'm, uh, as I'm up there, let me just change the camera so. You know that. Oh, I hope I didn't close anything. <laughs> I might go back a little bit. Aaron, can you just tell me? Um, I'm going to stand there. Can you tell me yeah. if I'm on, if I'm in the frame, and where to where to go to become in the frame? Take a step back, take about three steps back. You are in the frame. Okay, great. Uh, so, this is actually perfect because there will be probably many times when you're standing here um, because you're doing something up on the board. I prefer redirection to be from a place of um, what I consider to be more power in front of any distractions or anything like that, but this is great. Um, because very likely you'll need to do this while you're here. Uh, and so you'll see on your sheet that there are a couple scrub, a couple pieces that I scripted out. It doesn't have to be exactly this, um, but I'll go through a couple of these practices and just, uh, you'll get the key. Gotcha. Oh, and if get... I understand correctly, it looks like the first one, you stop between words, and on the second one, you self-interrupted in the middle of a word. Correct. Um, you will notice though for the first one, I don't say the S in fractions. Um, and I actually go back and repeat the entire like few words that I was stopped on. So uh, self-interrupt's much more powerful when it doesn't sound like this because stopping at this is a normal place to stop in a sentence. You might not get the effect that you're, that you're looking for, right? I stopped in the middle of the word your um, right there and so that was more effective. Um, the idea is making the stop um, be as uh, powerful enough that it catches students' attention. Gotcha. Got it? Great. So I'm talking about multiplying fractions. We're going to pretend that there are uh, two students over here who are talking and potentially uh, fooling around over there. Gotcha. Okay, folks. So as we talked about, the key to multiplying fractions... The key to multiplying fractions is to... Right. I'll do that one more time. These students over here, let's do those students in the back there talking over there. 
So guys, as we spoke about, the key to multiplying fractions The key to multiplying fractions is to... So my only question for you, for you would be, do you always repeat, or would you sometimes just pick up from where you started? Yeah, if you notice the next one, and I'll go through this, I'll go through this one, I think it's, um, my personal preference is that it's more powerful to repeat the thing that those students likely just missed. Um, but there's no hard and fast rule for this. Gotcha. The point is to make the stop sound like, you ever see in like a movie when like people walk into a party that shouldn't be at that party and the record goes like, ah! right? Gotcha. Like, think about that, uh, think about that image as you're working through this. Gotcha. Sound cool? The next one I'll try. Um, folks, at this point, we're gonna begin analy analyzing the text to determine author's purpose. Again, folks, at this point, we're gonna begin analyzing analyzing the text to determine author's purpose. So you see, both examples are a little bit different. In one, I'm repeating that entire phrase previous, uh, the previous phrase. In the other one, I'm just finishing the word. But either way, it sounds like a record skipping off of a, of a record player. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Great. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do is just take um, 30 seconds, even less. Use a lesson that you're currently working on um, and just jot down where it says script what is something you could potentially say uh, to your students and a stopping point. And I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just tell you different places where uh, students are, are misbehaving. Let's just take a moment to do that. No problem. Great. Uh, so why don't you hop up, and uh, I'm going to give you some feedback. I just want to make sure you're in the frame. So if you just step up there, kind of where I was. Great. That's perfect if you stay there. Um, and I'm going to ask you to uh, just let's do a dry run, see what it sounds like. And let's, uh, let's imagine that these two students, the two misbehaving students, are down here uh, up front. OK. So the, the key to understanding graphing linear Graphing a linear equation is to find the, uh, the x-axis and the y-axis. Great. Okay. First of all, thanks so much for diving into practice. I love that about that relationship. You just, you, you're uh, fearless when it comes to diving in and putting yourself out there. Let's try that again. My initial feedback is that you're just, I get that this is a brand new script to you. So you're not projecting powerfully enough. So let's, I know that it's just the two of us. Let's try and project as if like students were actually in the room. Volume, think about your voice being twice or three times as loud as you just were. Okay. Let's not worry about the stop right now. We still need to focus on the stop in a minute, but like first and foremost, let's get the volume of the voice up like we're speaking to the entire room. Okay. So the key to understanding graphing linear equations is knowing the x and the y axis. Great, okay, so let's try the same thing, twice as loud as you just were. All right, the key to understanding linear equations is understanding the x and the y axis. Great, okay, um, let's go one more time, a little bit louder than that, as you're really starting to internalize that. Let's think about, put, leave the script down, don't even worry about the script at this point, it doesn't matter if you don't say it perfectly, project that voice, that young student in the back can't hear you, let's really, really get, get that message across to him. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, the key to what we're doing today is to make sure you understand that graphing is necessary. And in order to do that, you need to know the x-axis and the y-axis. Great. Much better. That's a, that's a teacher that's commanding his room, not in a negative way, but in like a, hey, this is important stuff. We need to learn this, and this is how it's going to happen. Great. Okay. Now let's try the exact same thing. Same volume, same presence. Let's try and make that pause. Remember, these two students down here are not complying. Just step to the, your left a little bit so we're on camera. These it. students down here are not complying. They're not listening to you right now. Right. Let's pause. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, the key to today's, the key to today's lesson is making sure that we understand how to graph equations and know the x-axis and the y-axis. Great. Let's do the exact same thing again. It was really solid, and my favorite part of it, I think the part that kids are going to dig the most, is that after you got them to comply, you nodded your head, which is like a subtle, like, 
I appreciate, right? Like, they're chatting, they're, they're young people. They could be talking about a million different things. They're not bad because they're having a conversation while you're talking. They're just doing something they're not supposed to be doing. So that little nod, it's great. I don't believe I did that in my practice, so thank you for doing that, because it's really important. Here's what I'm gonna ask you to do. Do the exact same thing. Same level, same volume. Um, same little nod after they comply. Stop in the middle of a word. You stopped after today's, and I don't think it was bad, but let's try and stop in the middle. The key to today, try and start, stop there. Try and stop in the middle of a word so it's more that record, that needle skipping off the record. Okay. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the key to today's less lesson is that we're going to be going over how to graph a line. Great. Try the exact same thing again. It was perfect. Do it again to get automaticity built in. Ladies and gentlemen, the key to today's less... The key to today's lesson is learning how to graph a line. Great, do it one more time. Ladies and gentlemen, the key to today's lesson, key to today's lesson is learning how to graph a line. How does that feel? It feels a little bit awkward. Yeah. But I can see how it'd be very effective. Yeah, and I think like it should feel awkward for every person in the room. It should get eyes to look up. It should even get other students in the class to look at the people, the students to whom you're looking at, and be like, "Hey, what's going on?" Right? Because it's weird for my teacher. It's awkward, as you Kelly, said. Can you please answer your phone or call the main office, please? Call it's, the main office. it's awkward, as you said, to stop in the middle of a word, and that's part of the power of this practice. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Great. Let's, I'm going to ask you to just stay there because I want to talk about anonymous reminder. Okay. Um, and just for the sake of the, of the camera, let's just do it up here so we are no problem. On, uh, on camera. Um, here's your pen. Okay. So when we think about anonymous reminder, I want you to think about this in terms of three to five students being off task. So self-interrupt self -interrupt works really well for like one to two students. Can you do it if there's a group of four in the back? Absolutely, positively, but these are just general guidelines. When we think about anonymous reminder, we're thinking of overwhelmingly the students doing what you're asking, but a handful, a few pockets around the room of students not doing it. It doesn't have to be necessarily disruptive behavior. It could be a student with a head down, a student not writing when you've asked this, two students over here, one student back there, but thinking about three to five students and uh, messaging to the room that there are approximately that many students that aren't complying without having to stop your lesson, without having to say, Jameer, Cheyenne, Bobby, like whatever, and like call out each person individually, just letting students know, hey, there are three to five students that aren't doing what I'm asking at this point. Gotcha. And let's make sure those folks join us. So I get the sense self-interrupt is when it's like a group of a couple of kids that are together, and the anonymous would be more if there are pockets around the room. Yeah. Okay. And again, you're playing with this. Could you do self-interrupt for five kids in the back who are just like, who are not complying? Absolutely. Probably the more powerful thing is the anonymous reminder at that gotcha. point. So I'll model this for you. I'll do a couple, and we'll follow the same pattern. I'll ask you to script out your anonymous reminder. Absolutely. Um, and then we will, uh, and then we'll practice that. Let me just internalize this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Folks, at this point, we have about four scholars who are not meeting the expectations of silently copying down the notes. I need those four folks to join us immediately. Again, folks, at this point, about four scholars who are not meeting the expectations of silently copying down the notes, I need those four scholars to join us immediately. Great. I'll do one more example for you. Cool. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we currently have three students who are not focused on me as I'm lecturing. I need those students to bring their focus to the front of the room immediately. Great. Um, so again, not calling, uh, not calling necessarily four or five different students out. That's time consuming. You run into the, I wasn't talking, she was talking to me. We don't need that type of stuff. What we need is like, hey, I've asked 27 students to do something and there are four or five of you who aren't. I'm just gonna name that and then get those folks back on task. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Yeah, so it's almost a bit of self-reflection on their part as well. Yeah, they actually look around the room. Oh, actually everyone else is writing silently. I'm not, gotcha. right? So like, it's just reminding kids, again, anonymously doing that. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Great. Um, script out a quick practice, um, something that you would say that makes sense for your classroom. Um, you can copy, you can use my template, um, you can use my template almost exactly, but just change it to make it uh, class specific for you. Gotcha. Um, and we'll just take a moment to do that. Just take me about one minute. Great.
How many kids come? We have about eight more minutes. Okay. Okay. Folks, at this point we have about four people. Okay, let me